Uh, okay, we'll go on to another question. We have several questions about housing, uh, affordable housing, and uh, foreclosures. So uh, we're, we'll do that in a couple of different ones. Um, but may I start with you, um, Ms. Taylor, on this? Um, with um, all the homes and foreclosures in the city, what uh, would you do to save the architectural heritage and um, draw families and first-time home buyers back to own a home in Plainfield? Well, some of the things that uh, people look at when they're looking for a home certainly is the tax base of the schools. While the purview of the, tax of the schools is not our responsibility, it's the council the tax base is. Um, that goes back to economic development. I would make sure regarding the oversight of the Department of Economic Development, they have a marketing plan. That's how we're going to lower our, tax, our taxes here in Plainfield. The other thing, so many people are losing their home because they get a tax lien due to a PMUA bill. It's one thing to get a tax lien when you pay your taxes late, but a PMUA bill, people are losing their home. <coughs> Doesn't make any sense. I propose a, a holiday. If you're in foreclosure, you have a tax lien on your house, and you can't pay, you're in foreclosure, well, you know what? You need to get a holiday for the PMUA. You know, they're giving money away already. They paid a $1 million payout to people who retired. Please, the people who go to work every day and can't pay the PMUA bill, well, you know what? They need to get a holiday, too. Thank you. Now, you know, I'm sorry. We will not have a pause at the end of Thank you. Um, now, Reverend uh, Brown, would you address the foreclosure of homes and the saving of architectural homes? Well, one of the things that is elected to this council, I would try to collaborate with Plainfield Housing Authority to plan and uh, build quality houses, a partner with state and uh, county officials to develop programs that will enable more Plainfield residents to become uh, uh, first-time homeowners and also programs a good friend of mine, Reverend Dr. Bostasaurus, has a program for people who are in foreclosure, how the banks will uh, allow them to uh, actually rent their homes and stay there until they can uh, catch up on, on their mortgage. But, you know, I think it's absolutely ridiculous to, to suggest that uh, people are losing their homes because of a PMUA bill. Uh, people are losing their homes because they don't have jobs, and people are losing their homes because uh, we were in a recession. That's why people are losing their homes. But people can also, uh, there are programs, you know, that I would work with people and uh, refer them to agencies that will help them keep their homes here in Plainfield. Thank you. Um, Mr. Uh, Abdul Khan? I don't know if I have an answer for that, but let me just make a couple of comments on that flea market. <laughs> uh, the flea market would have, a, it would have a roof. It would have solar panels on it. There would be police mini stations. It would create some jobs for security, some jobs for maintenance. We would get that train to stop there again. There would be a lot of people that come there, and a lot of people could make a lot of money, I believe. Uh, we could have state-of-the-art flea market. We have these metal containers and they can lock up and you can shut it down at night. And you could also have wooden boxes where you had organic stuff growing. Uh, I just think it uh, uh, has a lot of possibilities. Thank you. Mr. Mann. I say the solution for getting people back into their homes and saving folks who are struggling. I think the solution really needs to come from the national level. But be that as it may, I have to say that you know people are struggling to pay their taxes. They're struggling to pay their annual bill. And I have to say that there, but for the grace of God, go I. I too have had to struggle. I've paid my annual bill each and every time, but I've paid it late at times because it was so unaffordable. And I believe that the tax relief that we need, we can get some of that if we were to reform the PMUA, bring it in-house. Why would the PMUA offer to all the solid waste of a community with a population of 65 million for $8 million, but yet 
65,000, I should say, population of 65,000. But yet they're charging the less than 50,000 people in Plainfield about $12 million. That just doesn't make sense. And that community that I'm referring to is paying $4 million to a private hauler to haul all of the solid waste from those 65,000 homeowners. And that's the kind of relief that we need. And the PMUA, if it is brought in house, we can provide that. Thank you. Excuse um, me, what was your question? <coughs> what was your question? Oh, I didn't hear oh. anyone answer your question. The, the question was on the foreclosures of homes in the city of Plainfield. Um, we're going to uh, move on then, if okay. Um, um, Reverend Brown, um, do you think we need more affordable housing in Plainfield, and what would your plan be to go bring additional uh, affordable housing in Plainfield? What would my plan be to, to bring more? If you agree that we need more affordable housing. I do agree that we need more affordable housing. Again, um, there are areas uh, in Plainfield uh, that can uh, land needs to be developed. Uh, Mr. Hop brings up, you know, the land across from the church for a flea market. Well, I, I think that we can put affordable housing uh, across in that area uh, and other areas uh, in Plainfield. We have uh, housing. We have affordable housing in Plainfield, but it's not really quality housing in Plainfield. I mean, when you say affordable, you know, you also want to add quality uh, housing. People are, uh, you know, they can afford where they live, but, you know, they're not pleased with, with the area or maybe the uh, element that might be in that area. So I think what we need to do is talk about affordable housing, also quality housing, and look for uh, uh, land here in Plainfield uh, where uh, that might be suitable. Thank you. Can you address affordable housing, Ms. Taylor? Uh, yeah, well, through my years, I ran an emergency shelter in the wine city for 17 years, so I'm well acquainted with the issues of housing. I, I believe that Plainfield has fully met the COMO responsibility. We have more than enough affordable housing. The issues that people have, when they don't have a place to live, are multifaceted. They need other supports. So when you talk about homelessness and so forth, Affordable housing, just housing is not the answer. The supports have to be there. I believe that Plainfield has more than our share of affordable housing. We have beautiful housing stock here. The issue is more of a federal issue about a livable working wage. People have to earn enough to be able to pay to live. That's not something that we can address at the municipal level, but we, I believe we have more than enough affordable housing here in the city of Plainfield, quality affordable housing. Mr. Mann. We had a company by the name of Landmark Development that has acquired a number of properties in our downtown. The principal has invested a significant amount of dollars in the city. And he is focusing on mixed use development, a mixture of commercial and residential in our downtown. And he's focusing on market rate housing as far as the part of his development that would have outcomes. And so on the government body, we need to make sure that we create the kind of environment that is conducive to attracting the people that would come into the community to occupy his market rate housing. He's been investing in our downtown and he's focused on commercial mixed use. That is the kind of development that we need to see, and it needs to be in our downtown area. And that individual has a lot of skin in the game, and when I am returned to the government body, I will make sure that I work with my colleagues to provide him the support that he needs to execute and to make good on his investment in the city of Philadelphia. Mr. Abdullah? Affordable housing. Yes, if you return. Let's go. Um, this, uh, I was watching TV the other day, uh, 
at Madison GC. And uh, there was a guy named Krugman on there. I mean, he's supposed to be the guru of uh, economics. And uh, basically, he said, it's going to take more jobs and better jobs. That's what it's going to take to deal with the affordable housing. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to start with you, uh, Mr. Abdul Haq, and this next question, and again, we have about four or five cards with the same question or variation, um, but this one wants to have you name three strategies to improve effective programming and outreach to Plainfields, seniors, youth, and its need. Three strategies, three plans, to improve effective programming and outreach for Plainfield's seniors, youth, and their neediest residents? Well, one strategy was a, a program I got implemented at the senior center was to have hot lunches. Um, we, I can't think of anything else right off the hand, but uh, Maybe I'll go with time. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mack, three strategies, seniors, youth, and the Plainfield and atheist. Oh, I'm sorry, you said youth. Youth. Uh, well, youth, seniors, and atheist. Oh, okay. Three I groups. I just said seniors. I have youth. Okay. Go um, for youth. This was, a, I mentioned it earlier, a program developing with the Board of Education and some other groups to have a collective uh, mentoring program. It's going to focus primarily on men at Washington School. And we're also going to provide food, go on trips, and we're going to uh, socialize. And uh, everybody's going to have a good time. It's going to be a lot of police, and uh, I think big things are going to come out of that. Thank you. Mr. Pat, three strategies. And one of the things that I would like to see is the creation of a recreation commission. That is something that my colleagues and I, we introduced and adopted an ordinance last year, and unfortunately, that ordinance was vetoed by the mayor. But I would like to revisit that so that we could create a recreation commission that would be run and governed and controlled by citizens who would be interested in creating and developing programs that will serve our youth and our seniors. And this kind of commission would be independent of local interference. It would be a group of citizens that would have the interest of our seniors and youth at heart. I also do believe that we have to create a support system so that our young people would know that we as adults, we care about them, we are here to support them. And I believe that in collaboration with the administration, the governing body, that we can come together to create those kinds of programs, the mentoring services, the outreach that we can, you know, provide to our young people so that they can begin to turn their lives around. I think a financial commitment is extremely important. We've got to put the resources, we've got to put our money where our mouth is. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Taylor, three strategies? Uh, certainly. Well, I believe the Council President Mack regarding the Recreation Commission. Certainly when we think of, as a recreation professional, myself, when we think of recreation, we think about youth. And we have a plethora of organizations, and certainly our Recreation Department does a really good job there. But I'd like to see some expansion and programming for our seniors, and just through all the ages. We're such a recreation-rich community that everyone should be able to partake. Um, the other thing is, especially with shared services, when you talk about our most vulnerable population. There's a lot of duplication of services. And we really have to watch the budget. And those are probably the first things that go. You know, when we move with down to the county, our plan for action services, uh, we need to make sure we make the best use of our dollars, making sure that we don't duplicate services. So that's more money that can go to our neediest. I have two. And of course, economic development, everything goes back to there. More opportunities for job creation. That's true. The, you know, I work at the high school. I mean, teach 10th grade. My 10th grade is going to be the first year getting a job. Nobody's hiring 14 and 15 year olds. So we need economic development so we can get these organizations on these kids. Thank you. Reverend Brown, three strategies. 
Uh, the first one uh, that I would uh, want to implement for the 